What's up everyone? It's Kelly and today I've got another swatch review for you. So today we are talking about the brand new Fairy Forest collection from ILNP for spring 2023. Before we get into the details of that, if you haven't heard of ILNP before, they are an independent nail polish brand that is based in the US and all of their polishes are 10 free, meaning they are free of 10 of the potentially harmful ingredients. They can be found in nail polish. They are also vegan, meaning they do not use any animal derived ingredients and they're cruelty free, meaning they do not test their products on animals. So we've got six new polishes to go over today. They're actually coming out on Friday, April 28th, but I have been making an effort to do my ILNP videos a little bit earlier because they do give a pre-order discount. So I'll talk about that a little bit more at the end of the video. But yeah, we've got a lot of variety in this collection. We've got a flaky jelly. We've got some shimmers. We have a few magnetic shades, and we also have a shade that has immediately become one of my favorite all-time nail polishes. And honestly, Honestly, it is not what you would expect to be a favorite of mine. And spoiler alert, I am wearing it right now, but let's actually just get into the swatches and I can talk a little bit more in detail about it. And then we can get into the pricing availability, my thoughts on the collection. So roll the swatch footage. So as with all of my swatch and review videos, I am using base coat underneath all of my swatches just to protect my natural nail and prevent any stains. Today, it's the Orly Bonder base coat. And we'll start off with the shade up above. This is a super light blue jelly that has has iridescent flakes running throughout. Now, normally I would classify this sort of polish as a crelly, somewhere between a cream and a jelly, but I think even though this has that really soft, milky kind of base, I would still consider it a jelly. It definitely has that high shine and squishiness to it, and I think it's just a little bit more workable than a crelly tends to be, so it's really easy to just layer up to your preferred amount of coverage. Now, I like a little bit of sheerness to mine, so I would probably wear this in three coats, but if you really want the full depth of color with that gorgeous blue and you want to see those iridescent flakies, three coats is what got me to that point. And I also noticed that there's just a little touch of a hollow sparkle in there, so it just looks very ethereal and pretty and kind of like a dreamy cloudscape vibe. Next up we have the shade Clover. You have no idea how excited I was when I saw this because I would say a scattered hollow jelly is probably my favorite formula from ILNP lately. I just love the way that they do it. I love that sheer colorful base and all of those little hollow flecks just packed in there. And of course, it's in this incredible, ugly, pretty yellow green chartreuse kind of color. And again, I thought it looked really gorgeous in two coats, but on me, since I have a pretty warm tone, it ended up leaning a little bit yellow in two coats. And I wanted to see how green I could get it to look look and I feel like I really got that chartreuse -y green kind of coloring the most when I did three coats and it is just so stunning. The formula was so smooth and workable and just really pretty. It definitely is giving me summery vibes. I love an ugly pretty nail polish and I just think this is so fun. Okay, I hope you're ready for a surprising commentary by me on this shade Pixie Party because let me tell you, I was not expecting to fall in love with this color so intensely. This is actually the shade that I was talking about in the intro that I'm still wearing on my nails, and it's this soft, sheer pink base that is absolutely packed with this duochrome shimmer that looks green and gold and even blue in some angles, and then it also has a hollow sparkle running throughout. And let me tell you, I have a hard time finding a nail polish that I don't love, but I will say in general, I don't tend to go for pink polishes. It's just not like the standout color for me, even though I do love wearing them. So when I fell in love with this shade, I was completely shocked at myself, but this is honestly the closest to perfect I have ever come across in a pink nail polish. It was so stunning and sheer in that first coat, but it was just very level, so it was easy to use. It also looked gorgeous in two coats. That's actually what I'm wearing right now in the intro and the outro, and it also looked really punchy in three coats if I wanted that like really intense color payoff. So this is an intensely perfect shade. I am absolutely in love with it. Can't recommend it enough. It's perfect. <laughs> 
And then we have the shade that I thought was going to be my favorite, and it's honestly also gorgeous. It's almost like the purple version of Pixie Party. It's a different color scheme going on, but it's still the same sort of vibe. It's this sheer, cool-toned purple that is absolutely packed with this shimmer that looks really intensely orange, but then you can also see little hints of gold, and then around the edges it almost turns a little bit green into blue. And again, it is just packed with a hollow sparkle as well. And this is another shade that I think just looks perfect no matter how much coverage you give it. So it looked great in one coat. It looked really pretty in two coats. Three coats is where I really got that full color and it did cover up my visible nail line. And it really does just kind of feel like the cousin to Pixie Party, but there's just something so shocking about this pinky green blue combo going on in Pixie Party. I just couldn't get enough of it. But yeah, this one's another stunner. And then the last two shades in the collection are both magnetic, which I I was really excited about because I have been loving the magnetic polishes from ILNP recently. I just think they're so gorgeous. This one is called Enchantment and it's a really interesting shade. I feel like it kind of sits somewhere between being blue and being green. I think it has a pretty blue base, but then the shimmer within it is like this intense green. And again, we get a little touch of hollow sparkle in there and I was really impressed with the coverage on this. Here's what it looks like in two coats without the magnetization. The way I like to magnetize is I do like to do full coverage on its own and then I'll apply one additional coat and while that coat is still wet I'll use the nail magnet and then I'll do my magnetization and you know me I love to do this aura style of magnetizing where it just kind of gives this like three-dimensional bubbly kind of look where all of the pigment goes to the top and you can see that intense color but then when you move your nail around you can see the color underneath it so I wanted to do that but of course I also wanted to show you what it looked like magnetized in the classic cat eye style and again I just did the same thing two coats for full coverage and then a third coat to actually apply the magnet and I thought this was a really stunning look as well in fact I might slightly prefer it because all of that green pigment concentrated down into one line and then we almost got this teal blue base color that had so much hollow sparkle it really looked like a northern lights vibe which I feel like I always say when it comes to these blue green magnets but it's just what they look like. And then last but not least, we have the shade Fawn, which is the other magnetic of the collection. And this one is really pretty too, and it's very different. It's this brown base color, but then within that base, we have this intense copper shimmer. And then we also have these little copper flecks in there. So they catch the light a little bit differently. Hopefully you can see them well on camera. Again, was really impressed with the coverage in two coats. And I just love how rich this brown color is, especially with the copper in there. It just feels so perfect for spring, even though I never would have thought of this as a springy color. There's something about that warmth that really speaks to me. And when I magnetized it in the aura style, all of that coppery shimmer really came forward so nicely and it almost gave off this golden glow, which I thought looked so ethereal and fun. I feel like I'm kind of stuck between deciding if this actually does give like a deer vibe or if it's more of a tree vibe, but I feel like honestly it works for both. And of course I did want to magnetize it in the cat eye style as well. And again, I was really impressed with how it looked in the cat eye look as well. It really just gave so much depth to that brown base color. And then we got all of that concentrated metallic pigment in the middle just to really give that three-dimensional look. And I just loved it. So here are all of the shades together, and as you could probably tell, I truly loved this collection. Now, I do tend to prefer the ILNP sets where all of the polishes are the same finish in different colors, but for some reason, this one is just speaking to me so much. I loved the finishes, I love the colors, and I love how they made them a touch springy just by giving that sheerness. I think that that, to me, feels like the perfect spring vibe, a very vibrant color that has just a touch of that soft sheerness to almost make it feel like awakening after winter. I don't know how to explain it, but I really love it. Of course, I especially love Pixie Party. I think it's just so incredible. I'm really going to be sad when I have to take it off because I am totally in love with it. But honestly, the rest of the shades are so perfect as well. Honestly, it would be shocking to me if a spring nail polish collection made it to my top five of the entire year, which is something I do at the end of each year. But 
but this one definitely is in the top of the running right now because I love this set. So yeah, those are the polishes and honestly, I really enjoyed them. I do love, if you didn't know this, ILNP generally does two six polish collections, one at the beginning of the season and then one kind of towards the middle of the season. And I tend to prefer the collections that are all a uniform finish in different colors. And they did recently do theirs, which I did swatch and review. But I feel like in this case, I do prefer these. I love the vibes of it. I love this color story. I think it's such a fun inspiration and I can really see that coming through in the colors. And I feel like it's a really nice mix of springy colors with something a little bit extra in them that just makes them feel more special. The colors are just really stunning and soft and pretty, but they just have so much going on in each one. But yeah, let's talk about pricing and availability. So these polishes do come in 12 milliliter bottles. They have what I like to call a medium wide flat brush. It's not too wide, but it's not too skinny. So I feel like it's kind of the perfect in between for people who prefer skinny brushes and people who prefer a wide flat brush. I think it's just a universally good brush size. The non-magnetic shades I reviewed, so the shimmers and that flaky polish, those retail for $10 USD on the ILMP website. And then the magnetic shades are gonna retail for $12.50 USD. But like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, ILNP does do a pre-order discount. So when their pre-order opens, which in this case, like I said, is Friday, April 28th, they do offer a dollar off of each polish from that new collection. So if you're interested in ILNP, I always encourage you grabbing them as early as possible just so you can take advantage of that sale. So I do want to get into the habit of reviewing them a little bit earlier so that more people can grab them on sale. But yeah, I feel like it's a really great price. I love the ILNP formula. It's nice and thin and delicate, but it's really easy to build up. And I would say it's one of the few brands that I am not only okay with being three coaters, but I actually prefer using them in three thin coats just because I feel like you get so much depth to each color. It's really hard to describe, honestly, unless you've tried the formula, but it's definitely different from any other brand I've used. So I really love these, but I'm curious to hear what you all think of these polishes. Which color is your favorite? What do you think of the magnetics? Leave it all in the comments. We can chat about it. If you enjoy my swatch and review videos, please give this one a thumbs up. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I put out new videos every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. And of course, a huge shout out to my supporters on Patreon, my Royal Astronomer, Amanda M, as well as my Cosmic Admirals, Rocket Man's daughter, Paula, Ken, Rosie, and Courtney. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye. Today's fun fact question comes from Patreon supporter Pookie Bear and Pookie Bear wants to know, what's your biggest challenge when it comes to keeping up with YouTube and social media? I think the biggest thing is just the amount of time it takes, specifically for making my videos, like the nail swatches and then doing this portion of the video. It takes a lot more time than you think. I think a lot of people think that the video takes as long as it takes to watch it, but I would say I, I spend at least 10 to 12 hours per video. So that definitely does take up a lot of time which don't get me wrong, I love it, obviously, that's why I do it. But I think the hardest thing is just the amount of time it takes. So if somebody requests a certain video or a certain collection, sometimes it can be a really long while before I actually get a chance to post a video about it. Or, you know, if somebody gives me a video idea, it's gonna take me a long time to implement it. One, because I do try to film my content early enough because it also takes a long time to edit them. And then two, just because of the amount of time it takes to make the new video. So so there ends up being a little bit of a delay and I, I know that that can be a cause of frustration for some people, especially since recently I did take a little mini week to week and a half break and I feel like I'm kind of just trying to catch up now on the collections that I wasn't able to review in like a timely manner. So I feel like I'm kind of behind now. So yeah, I think that's the hardest part is just like constantly feeling like I'm behind. But yeah, that's it. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.